we're back. We are excited to be back with you guys. We're so sorry. We missed two weeks. Yeah. It's the, the longest inadvertent break we've had. Yeah, things have been crazy over here. I mean, life has just come at us. And, you know, when you're dealing with not just your own life, but the life of a spouse and also uh, how you have a child, there are times when, you know, it, it can be difficult to get everything in order so that you can invest time and energy into other projects like this podcast so yeah we are sorry um, but we're glad to be here and i hope you guys have been looking forward to this next episode of our podcast love and life yeah so we are coming up at the end of another week here it's thursday for us and let's dive straight in yeah uh first i want to look at the title for Sunday there were three titles actually so um, you know whenever there's more than one it's difficult to just kind of remember it so I'm just kind of read it so that we can all be on the same page uh, the titles were if you were given one thing do many things through it rather than being satis- satisfied with just that mm. number two was it will surely be fulfilled and three was dream of revelations and regular revelations all right, so when you first heard this title, what was your immediate response? Before the message started, you just heard the title. I was excited. Uh, thinking about especially number one, title number one and title number three. I was excited for title number one because, I mean, the story with the, the talents uh, mm-hmm. and the servants uh, in Matthew 25 is it's a story that's always captivated me. It's always been so interesting. Um, and thinking about how the message was going to flow based on that was, you know, it gave me a lot of hope. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because um, it's, it's funny you, you asked that because uh, just before, I think, yeah, it was just before, the day before this, before the Sunday message on Saturday, um, we had talked already before about um, my, I had this idea to kind of go into the world of translation and, well, not necessarily interpretation remotely, but world of translation from Japanese to English to, you know, do some work on the side. Um, But I was wondering, you know, is it God's will? You know, is this the right time for this? I want to make sure I I use my skills and and my talents for something valuable. Um, But I couldn't get around to setting up this profile on on the website I was trying to make my account on. Um, So I, I didn't get to it on Saturday. So I thought, okay, I'll just listen to the Sunday message and then decide because there's always guidance, there's always direction that comes from the Sunday message. And lo and behold, the first title was, if you were given one thing, do many things through it, mm. rather than being satisfied with just that. And to me, uh, that was the answer. And I mean, mm-hmm. as I listened to the message also, I kind of you know, got a clear answer on, on, uh, on that uh, topic. But knowing that I have this Japanese ability, why stop it? Only using it in my current workplace if I can use it in other areas to develop it and make it even better, you know, like taking that one bag or those two bags and going and, and making it into to more bags. Right? Mm. So I was super excited about that. And then number three, I have a lot of dreams just in general. So I was excited to hear what sort of um, message would be given about dream revelations, the importance of it or or anything to focus on specifically uh, regarding that. So, yeah. Yeah, I think everything in the message was just so affirming to the work that we have been doing as it is. Um, One thing that really stood out to me was there was one evening you had gone to go uh, put Kyo to sleep Mm -hmm. and you were talking to him and you came back and you told me, yeah, I just started talking to Kyo in Japanese, but it was like the craziest thing because like just naturally, even more naturally than I would have in English, I started talking about the Holy Trinity and like how much they love him. Mm-hmm. And so like even from that point, I was like, you know, there really is more value to you having this skill set than just, you know, for work or as a profession but i think that you know that we don't even yet know the potentials that lie in in you having that ability so Mm -hmm. the fact that the direction this week was invest in that and use it like 
You know, how sad is it that God gives us so many like great gifts and skills and then we just kind of sit on them. Like we <laughs> we are that one servant that's like, I put buried it in the ground. Here you go. <laughs> like, I didn't lose it. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So I thought that was really interesting and that also made me feel that you know, in all of our work, it's not just for our financial gain or personal benefit, but there are also great ways spiritually that we can invest those abilities as well. Mm-hmm. Um, as crazy as we're talking, I just was brought into the mind of remembering that back back in my years of youth, <laughs> when I was in the former faith, um, I was in the youth group and they had, I think it was like a series or something that was happening, maybe like once a month where they would have, a, a young person come up and prepare a message and deliver it. Mm-hmm. And my message was on this scripture passage exactly. Oh, wow. And I remember, like, okay, here's the thing. I love speaking, but I also am a very concise speaker. Like, so it was the shortest message in, like, the history of messages. Oh, my God. It was over so fast. And, like, you know, now in Providence, I'm sure I would have elaborated a lot more and been able to go into much more depth. But at that time... I just remember that like scripture really meaning a lot to me and it felt like something that I could really speak to. So to have that kind of circle back and come into my life now from the position of a bride in this history, um, but also just as uh, a mother and someone who's working, like all of these different roles that I play in my life, looking at the skills and abilities that I have and how can I maximize them and utilize them more fully for spiritual purposes, you know, to give glory to the heavens, to give glory to God. I think that's where the greatest value is. And I mean, I think what we wanted to talk about today was just testifying about how great it is that once your mind is open to take action and you start to actually put forth the effort in that direction, like God really amplifies that and makes the rest happen. Like the momentum picks up very quickly. Um, I'll let Aaron speak for himself, Mm -hmm. but he even this week had, several opportunities come up like unexpectedly like not in ways that you would anticipate Mm -hmm. uh to do translation slash interpretation um and then i also have gotten uh, opportunities to have professional conversations in an area that i'm passionate about so who would like to share first well tell them tell them about what it is that you've you've done with the word of this week you know what in what ways have you applied because I, I i see you every day obviously and i've <laughs> seen what them, you do but, but they haven't seen you know they don't know so i mean it'd be nice to share you know what you've yeah. done with the well, word i was asking I, if you wanted to go first if you wanted me to go first, oh no i, talk, I already it. talked so you, you talk <laughs> and then i'll then i'll talk again <laughs> like, i'm gonna take a break <laughs> no i'm just kidding <laughs> okay Uh, Let's see. So, you guys might remember, it's probably been about a month now, um, I started my YouTube channel. And Mm. so, yeah, uh, the Montessori channel is live, and I'm working on the next video. But my dad goes to a BNI group every week, and that's, uh, what is it, business networking is something I can't remember Mm, can't remember anyhow it's a standing group that they have of professionals and it's very I don't want to say exclusive but like they only have one person it to represent an industry so that there's no like competition within their cohort 
and then they rotate and take turns like presenting what their business is, uh, offering referrals and things like that. So it's really good from like a business and entrepreneur standpoint. Anyhow, that all that is to say, there's somebody in my dad's group that they got into a conversation and this person owns a school actually not too far from where Aaron and I live. And so they got to talking and then my dad mentioned me and he said, you know, yep, she's really into Montessori. And so, you know, it would be great if you guys have any interests that you want to connect, you can do that. So fast forward, you know, a couple weeks and I just spoke to this gentleman earlier this evening and it was really great. I mean, I was able to express to him the values of Montessori education, what my perspectives are. He had some questions. He's had some experiences observing classrooms. And so he wanted to know more about why certain things are like one way or what the best way is to do it. Um, And his school is not like pure Montessori, but it's Montessori inspired. So it kind of takes some of the core principles, but then they kind of add their own spin to it. But it was a really fruitful conversation. And I'm curious to know like where that will take us. I did manage to uh, make an appointment to go and actually visit the school in a couple weeks. So I think that was like a really great opportunity, but in addition to that, like really investing time into building out my website. So um, I'm gonna try and get some more content posted up there. It is live, but I will post the URL probably in uh, the next week or two, once I kind of get it a little bit more to the standard that I have for myself. Um, And then what else have I done? I so many things at school. <laughs> I feel like this is the the season where a lot of momentum is happening. Uh, simultaneously, though, in addition to the business side of things, I just start with the business because um, throughout the message, it was so like direct. Like usually, the word I mean, it's, it's always very clear. But it's kind of like you can take the word and then apply it to your situation like as it needs to be. But then this week it was like, just like you're running a business. You should do this just like you're running a business. Like three, at least three times I heard that. And I was like, okay, got it. I'm going to make sure that I invest my time in that way because like it was very clear that in our case, like that was a very like literal direction and so that was very reaffirming um what was I was I gonna say uh I was gonna talk about school Mm -hmm. and there was another way Oh, oh, oh the evangelism yeah so way back when way back when we went to Myrtle Beach um I had alluded to, I was considering like, you know, a style of evangelism and wanted to kind of see if it worked. So I thought I would kind of circle back to that. So this is of course, October, our month of giving glory to God. And this is an area where I personally feel like I've always fallen short. Like I never, Like I give glory, but I never feel like I've really expressed the full like heart that I want to. It's always like, you know, the end of September, you're gearing up for it and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this, this, this. I'm going to set this condition. And then October 1st, you're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm in it. And then like October 5th, you miss a day. And then like October 10th comes around and I don't know, it, it just kind of slides sometimes or like you might set yourself up with like an expectation to do a certain amount of something but then the amount just kind of gradually over time slips i don't know if anybody else experiences that i'm just being honest with you guys but this month i was like you know what no matter what 
I need to go out and evangelize. Like I need to go and talk to people. I need to like loosen up that muscle, get out there and share this word. And so what we have been doing as a church and, you know, I've really been kind of pushing things uh, to get them going forward. So we put together an organization um, and we've called it Jesus Fan Club. And we just wanted to like kind of have a an official presentation for our Bible study that people can kind of hook on to. And so the way that it's, I mean, I won't say so different, but it's like as an adult at this stage, not and working full time, I don't really have access to go to campuses. So like campus evangelism is kind of a bust for me right now. Um, and then there's like street evangelism, which of course, you know, you can talk to anybody at any time, but like going to a specific location with a, with that purpose in mind, um, you know, I, I do think that it makes a difference. And so what we have done is we have started going out to join all the fall festivals. And so we went to one, uh, a week, two weeks ago, maybe? Yeah, I think it was two weeks or so. Yeah, and then we're going to go to another one this weekend. But it's really nice because there's, like, guaranteed to be lots of people out that are probably going to be in your target, like, range of people that you want to talk to. Um, but it's also just a time that you can enjoy. You're doing it, like, with the Trinity, like, with other people. So I just felt that it, it's been very refreshing and also just making the most out of my favorite season of the year. So that's another way in which I feel that uh, I'm putting my talents and abilities into action and giving God that good return on investment, mm -hmm. that ROI. <laughs> and Chelsea sold herself short there a little bit. So she's actually been doing a lot of the behind the scenes work to, to coordinate. I mean, our, a lot of our church members have been involved. And we all kind of had our you know, individual roles in the process. But she's been working hard to try to find events and, and you know, keep the, the fire burning in a sense in, in everyone's hearts. Um, as we gear up to go to these events. And, and um, one thing that I, I really enjoyed about, you know, being a part of the Jesus Fan Club is it really puts this desire to know and understand Jesus and to love Jesus at the forefront. Mm -hmm. And that's super important um, for us as members of this history because, you know, Sunseam loved Jesus more than anybody else. You know, and not just in the way that he felt about Jesus, but in the way that he lived, constantly making room for Jesus, constantly wanting to learn from Jesus and follow Jesus and, and connect with Jesus. Um, and having that as the, the focal point of our organization helps us to keep that in mind. Um, because we, you know, we hear the word and, and we hear something preach and, you know, receive these revelations from, from God and the Holy Spirit. And, you know, it's not, we don't always, I mean, if you're not trained or if you're not practicing this regularly, you don't always necessarily think, oh, wow, something is so close to Jesus when he says this. You know, Jesus can kind of, unfortunately, and I know I say this because it was the case for me for a time, Jesus can become kind of an afterthought. Um, but having Jesus at the forefront of like, you know, why are, what is what makes us different from other Bible studies? What makes us different from other re outreach groups? It's our understanding of Jesus, who he is, and what he is teaching, and, you know, what he shared in the Bible, and, of course, what the Bible says and what it means. Um, and to have that and really makes us focus more on our relationship with Jesus and also our relationship uh, with the Holy Trinity, too. Um, and I, I personally like that a lot, and it's been uh, quite inspiring to, to see Chelsea out you know, doing her best and talking with people and, you know, working behind the scenes to coordinate and, and get schedules ready and make polls and, and things of that sort. So, yeah. Thanks. That's warms my heart. <laughs> yeah. So those are some ways that I feel like really, mm, 
this is it feels to me like the the marking of a I'm not going to say a new chapter but it's it feels like a turning point in a myriad of ways that you know God is really getting us ready for a new season in life um you know the direction of all of these messages recently are very clear i mean clean up <laughs> like get your acts together <laughs> um but also you you need to put in your full effort and your full dedication in order to succeed and uh, today, this morning's message, uh, we had Sun Sim speaking, ah, which is always so refreshing. Um, but I mean, it was just the value of time and seizing time. And I think there, it's just a lot of things are coming together in a way that I don't think we can see, but we can feel it. And I'm sure it'll come to full fruition at the right time, as long as we take action the way that we should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one, one thing that I really liked from the message too, um, I think it was, I don't remember if it was Sunday or Wednesday at this point, and kind of the, the content is a little bit mixed in my head. Um, but in one of the, the um, sermons, uh, something talked about how um, if people take action, even without believing in God, Mm. Um, they can gain according to the like the innate innate blessings, which essentially is like the blessings that come from the fruits of their their hard work. Mm -hmm. But they can't gain the blessings from God. Mm -hmm. But if we, people believe in God and take action on God's will and they work hard, they can not only gain the innate blessings, meaning the you know gain from the hard work that they invested, but they can also gain God's blessings. Uh, and that that statement is, I wouldn't even say it's simple. But it's it's so fundamental, but it really just clearly explains why even people who do wicked things or perhaps people who don't believe in God or live doing whatever they want can still be rich and powerful and have authority and influence, mm -hmm. and which is something that I wondered growing up. Uh, and I'm sure there are many other people who wonder how that's possible. You know, if, if um, you know, we have to love God and live for God in order to be successful. How are people successful without loving and live, loving God and living for God? And something clearly just give, gives us the answer, right? It's it's not because that they're not successful because they believe in God. I mean, they 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 have to put in the effort. And if you put in effort, then you can gain that much. Just like for example, if you um, you know apply for a job, then you can get a job. If you don't apply at any point, even if someone brings you an offer or an opportunity, if you don't do anything, you can't gain, get a job, then you can't get paid. Mm -hmm. So even if someone believes in God, if they sit still and do nothing, they can't gain. But if someone doesn't believe in God, but they go out and apply to 100 jobs, I mean, they're more likely to get a job than someone who sits and does nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it was something to, to keep in mind, of course, but it is, it's such a, a great... I would say it's an invigorating, the, and at least that's how it felt for me. It's very invigorating to hear a um, word like that because it really just goes to show that if you go out and do it, then you can make it happen. And yeah. especially if that's God's will, especially if that aligns with what God wants, then it's only going to get better. Like the blessings will only be greater for what you do. So I really enjoyed that, that aspect, and I've, I've applied it too this week. Um, you know, you, you kind of alluded to what I've done that's a little, that's uses my Japanese uh, in more ways than I was using, you know, in, in weeks prior. Um, so to kind of give a little more context into that, uh, I had a coworker who was going through some stuff in his family, um, and he needed some, um, you know, he had to go to the, the doctor and, and have all sorts of conversations with, um, medical jargon and lots of words that he's not familiar with. Now he speaks English fairly well, 
uh, and he, but he's Japanese, the Japanese expat working here in the U.S. Um, and so he messaged me, or maybe he called me. I think, yeah, he called me a, a couple days ago and was like, hey, Aaron, uh, I need your help. Um, I have this going on, and uh, I, I, I won't be able to communicate at, that, at the level that I need to for it. Can you interpret for me? And this was like, I think the day after, or a day, yeah, probably a day after I set up my business mm -hmm. on this website and like was like, yeah, I'm going to start translating and I'm going to really polish my Japanese and, you know, make a point to improve, you know, proactively. And like the day after, I think is what it was, he, he contacts me. He's like, hey, I need your help. Can you can you interpret this high level um, English into Japanese for me? And I was like, OK, so I took him up on it. I joined a Zoom call with him um, and was able to interpret. And I learned so many new words as a result of it. So many medical words that I'd never thought to, you know, study or, you know, had never needed in daily conversation. Um, and it gave me a lot of confidence, too, because um, I was I'd always been nervous about trend like translating or interpreting from English into Japanese. Um, because Japanese is not my first language. It's much easier to to understand you know, pretty clearly in your second language and then translate naturally into your, your native language. So I was a little bit nervous, but the Zoom call went really well. I was, you know, able to communicate very clearly and um, everyone who was involved in it was, um, you know, very thankful that I was there and, and my, you know, it, my presence had an impact and it felt great. And then I needed to help them again and kind of a follow up uh, today. So I did that as well. And that also required high level interpretation. Uh, I did uh, consecutive interpretation, not simultaneous. So I didn't speak while the other person was speaking. I would, they would speak some and then pause and then I would translate or interpret and then the other party would, would speak and then I would interpret after they you know, said something and paused. Um, but still, it, I learned even more words today um, and you know, actually took the time to read up on the content that I was talking about in Japanese, so I learned a lot more words that way. And like, it's just been, I feel like, a, a, a exponential growth over the past few days, just in, in terms of how much I've been able to understand and how much more information I've been able to absorb, um, and also how excited I've been to do this work. You know, it's even to the point that I'm like, wow, I would love to make this, um, you know, not just a side gig that I can do, but if this develops and becomes a viable option for the future, it might be cool to actually make this into a career. Like that, that's the, the place that I got to after just these um, few days here. And I really am thankful to the Holy Trinity because the word was the catalyst. And I, perhaps I would have done these things anyway. Perhaps I would have still said yes to help inter with interpretation uh, when my coworker requested it. Um, even if the word hadn't come in the way that it did, or if I hadn't made uh, my translator account on, on uh, that website. Uh, but I wouldn't have been in the same mental space, and I wouldn't have been thinking about how to capitalize on this opportunity. You know, um, One thing that really stands out to me about the parable is that the, the servant who buried the bag of money in the ground didn't just misunderstand the master and what kind of person he was but it shows that he didn't understand the value of what he'd received, mm. right? If he had understood the value, he would have at least put it in the bank and been like, mm. oh, like the master's probably not the best person. And, you know, even if that's the way that he thought about his master, he still would have been like, well, but this is a lot of money. If I just buried it in the ground, that's not going to do anything. Like I should at least do something with it, you know, have some sort of return. But he didn't understand the value of that. He just put it in the ground and said, oh, well, you know, whatever. And so... And that kind of stood that that stood out to me, and and I'm thankful that I didn't just take my Japanese ability and just kind of put it in the ground, and then just kind of you know go about my life doing only what I really needed to do with Japanese. Um, when I take it out and I invest it into different areas, uh, and when I cultivate it and develop it, you know that that is how I've been able to gain so much this week, and how I've had such a huge shift in my mentality, um, and see so many more options for the future. So. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very excited for not just this week, but now I'm really excited for how this is going to develop uh, going into the future and even how I can use this to support Japan Providence. You know, Japan Providence has 
um, you know, videos or uh, announcements or events or things that they are only making in Japanese, like not originally from Korea, that they'd like to share with English speaking countries. I can be the conduit, the one that translates that or that interprets whatever they need and use that to, in a sense, support and bolster the English speaking world of Providence too which would be phenomenal. And I already have some ideas. I don't know if they'll be really necessary, but there are some resources in Japan, um, like head leaders or pastors in Japan that have delivered phenomenal, really long, but really powerful and in detailed lectures, um, like about the history, like his, God's history. There's one in particular. It's like a three, two, three day like lecture series of uh, one of the very prominent head leaders in Japan that was going around to churches delivering this and it, like it was mind blowing like earth shattering how good it was like I, I I can't even really express how good it was but that resource she made it in Japanese entirely and the whole thing is in Japanese but if that's something that would you know people would benefit from hearing in English you know and that would still fit you know given the cultural differences and things of that sort it's something that we could at least, I could at least talk with them about putting English subtitles on, you know, like, so these, all these ideas of how I can not just, you know, support my family better or improve my skills better, but even support God's history better have started to come to mind because of this invest, these investments I've started to make after hearing the word. So it, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for, for what could become of all of this. Yeah, you guys should see the light in his eyes right now. <laughs> the pace of his speaking is like picked up. He's like, yeah, I'm passionate. I'm like, yeah, there it is. There's the fire. So this is good. But yeah, there's there's so much that we have a lot of hope for right now. Um, and we're working diligently. So uh, I hope that you all will uh, be accommodating and bear with us if we miss you sometimes um we might reduce our recording schedule uh and post twice a month uh just to make sure that we're able to keep some regularity um but yeah we just want to make sure that we we shared with you how things are going um but also, you know, again, please let us know in the comments what, how are you giving glory to God this month? And if you have any great uh, evangelism testimonies, would love to hear those. Um, or ways that you yourselves are taking action on the word this week. I feel like it's such a great message for those who are, excuse me, looking to make to, um, sees the opportunity that God is clearly giving us. Um, we're kind of wrapping up this year. We're winding down in the last couple of months. So we all know what that means. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I hope that everyone is diligently uh, washing their robes. <laughs> um, I think that it was a message a couple weeks ago that was really shocking and really piercing that, uh, you know, Sunson was going around in the spiritual world and was surprised to see that there weren't many people who were wearing bright clothing. So, mm. um, not to close this on a super heavy note, <laughs> but I do want to ensure that we do our part in uh, upholding, you know, God's shimjong right now and not only think about ourselves and the things that uh, bring us joy, but most importantly, the things that bring God joy. And so, you know, more than, well, I should say, along with taking action on the word, you know, making sure that we ourselves are in the best condition as brides is right now like the foremost priority so mm -hmm. i hope everyone is zealously and passionately praying with sincerity mm -hmm. and for those of you who are married i mean you probably know this for those of you who are looking forward to that time and are working on themselves 
or for those who are a little further out from that, I mean, you know, I'll share something with you. Um, when you are in a relationship, it is it's two totally different worlds to live your daily life looking for things that will make you happy just by yourself and for looking for ways to make the other person happy. Mm. It's very, very different. Mm. Very different. The way that you approach conversations, the way that you have conversations, the way that you interact, the things that you keep in mind, the efforts that you make, they're all very different depending on if you're trying to live just for your satisfaction alone or to bring satisfaction and joy to the other party. You know, and if you're doing it well, that shouldn't necessarily come at the expense of your joy or at the expense of your satisfaction. That should actually bolster and increase how satisfied you are because you're not, it's not like you're cutting off your leg in order to like, <laughs> to like do something to help the person like, that you, you care about, right? You're, you're making sacrifices at times, of course, but it's not to the point that you like just dread your life, you know, it, like you're investing your time, your energy, and in, in doing so, your love into this other person. And so when it comes to our relationship with God as well, uh, you should approach it the same way, you know, or not just you, we, we all should approach it that way. You know, to, to not just say, God, you know, I, I've been doing this and, and I, I want to know this, so help me. Or, or, you know, God, I just want this, um, so, you know, support me or, you know, bless me or whatnot. All right. This is actually one of the biggest and most shocking realizations I had. I think it was like my first time ever visiting Wormingdom. I remember going, and this was in the winter, it was like December, or like when I was a newcomer. I just recently... Um, realized the time period and was in Wormingdung and there weren't many people there at the time. It was very cold too, but I remember there was a pre-dawn service where we went to the, uh, it wasn't the 316 Memorial Hall as we know it now, but it was before, you know, how it looked before. And I was sitting in there and we had a little service. I think the English speaking um, people had a, like a little service on the side because the Korean one was like just all in Korean. Um, and then afterward, there were people praying in the sanctuary. And I remember I was with a few other guys and I started trying to pray. And I prayed for probably like four minutes, five minutes. I mean, I was tired too, of course, but I prayed for four or five minutes and like, that was it, I was tapped out. I was like, dang. And I look, I open my eyes and I look up and there's like a Korean guy <laughs> just praying, like continuously, like, really passionately, just up, you know, a few pews, you know, in front of me. And then, of course, the other uh, English-speaking guys are also still praying. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's everyone praying about still? And so I try to close my eyes and pray a little more. And I got maybe 30 more seconds of prayer, and I was tapped out. I was like, I'm done. I don't know what else to say. And then I looked up, and everyone was still praying. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then I tried again, and I maybe got a, another minute, and then I was tapped out. And I was like, I don't get it. How can they pray for so long? Like, I, I'm struggling to pray for like six minutes. And then it struck me, the Holy Spirit struck me. And I was shocked because the realization I got was, you're only praying for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're only praying about things that you want. Mm -hmm. But in this prayer, you haven't once asked what God wants. And that shocked me. I was like, oh my gosh. And I didn't even know what to say. I was just like speechless, sitting there in silence. Well, it, the sanctuary wasn't silent. People were praying. But I was sitting there silently, just like, oh my gosh. I can't believe I never thought about this. I've only been saying, God, you know, I need this. Or God, help me with this. Or, you know, this person needs this. Help them with that. You know, or please bless me. Or like, I'm going through a hard time. So this, it was all just me, 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 and some, maybe some other people, but really, God, I need this. So do this for me. Help me with this. Follow, you know, go, go along in this way for me. Not like, I didn't ask once, God, what can I do for you? Hmm. God, what, is, what are you concerned about? How can I help to relieve that concern or that stress? You know, how can I support you? What will are you trying to fulfill through me? How can I work to fulfill that? You know, when you change that perspective from, you know, talking or thinking just about yourself and instead thinking about God, it's, it's a whole new, it's a whole different world. That's, that's really the point I'm trying to make. It's completely different. So, I mean, this is something that I realized once again, 
um, I think it was just a couple of days ago when I, I just prayed in the afternoon, like one afternoon and that came to mind again. And I was like, God, you know, I don't just want to be happy. I want, I want you to be happy. I want you to, to know that I'm here to support you, that I love you. So, you know, what can I do to help you? Please help me to realize what I can do for you. All right. And I think that makes a huge difference. And if we all have that kind of mentality, that's when we're really approaching the, the mentality in the heart of a bride. Someone who doesn't just think, you know, about ourselves first, but someone who thinks about God and moves for God instead of praying so that God will move for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that resonates. Um, you know, and I think we all have times where you know, we're fatigued or, you know, struggling to figure out what we need to pray for. But, you know, I know that there are people who use lists or, you know, different methods. For me, I find the power of imagery or imagination to be also really helpful. So if this is useful to anyone listening, Um, I have started recently just creating a space in my mind where I envision myself walking into like the Trinity's home and how would I converse with someone sitting across the table from me. And, you know, we might be eating or having a drink of tea or something, but just creating an atmosphere in your heart, in your mind can also help because I think sometimes we kind of get into rote prayer styles where we know how to check the boxes, you know, okay, I I gave Thanksgiving, okay, I... I asked for something, I promised God I would do something, I repented, but like, you know, more than just having a monologue of just talking at somebody, having that conversation, leaving space for inspiration to come when you ask a question or when you share a thought or a concern, like that back and forth is what makes a relationship and in I guess recent months I've just really started to think more deeply about what it's going to be like as a spirit in the golden city and like how you will interact when you are able to like actually encounter this like holy trinity face to face and it's like if we don't practice that basic skill of having a conversation while we're here on the earth like it could be really awkward. So thinking about it more as, I mean, it's in the word all the time. It's in all the songs. Prayer is conversation. We got to converse, converse with me. But I think sometimes it's easy to fall back, especially people coming from the former faith who were kind of taught to pray a certain way. Um, it, it's good for us to exercise our conversation skills, our spiritual conversation skills Mm -hmm. it's easier to converse with someone when you know you know you're on good terms too Mm. like if you come before god and you know you've ignored god you know you've you know put certain things before him or you know had certain habits in your life that you probably shouldn't have the conversation is not going to go very well you know or it's going to be very difficult there's going to be that awkwardness or that discomfort it's going to be really hard to really connect to God because it's not just you saying, God, I want to talk with you. So, hey, talk with me. But there's a being on the other end that has to reciprocate. Mm-hmm. And if the hearts are very distant, then, you know, it's it's hard to just kind of start up a conversation. It can be difficult to really feel connected. And that's why, especially at those times, repentance is, is go- like gold. It's so valuable. Because you're like, God, you know, I, I really wanted to connect with you, but... And I know I have these shortcomings and, and it's been difficult and, and just be honest, you know, honesty is something that in many ways we, we lack in this, in this day and age, There's a lot of, you know, ghosting or, or hiding behind 
things or making excuses or just outright lying. But being honest and vulnerable is, is a skill that, you know, we really, I think, have to um, hone and, and polish. And I think if you do that with God and you're able to do that with God and you see the, you feel and experience the benefit of, of approaching a relationship in that way, then I think it will also be easier to do it with other people too. Mm. Yeah. So thank you guys if you've listened <laughs> up until this point. It's getting quite late on our end. It's almost 11. Um, But we really wanted to make sure that we had uh, an opportunity to share with you all. And I hope that this has been a meaningful time and that you were able to gain something from it. So please do let us know uh, how you liked today's episode. And as always, we're open to uh, any requests if you have anything that you want us to talk on. Uh, or pray about any way that we can support you guys. We are here to do that as your Providence family. Yep, and one last thing for me. Um, I think our project Getting Back to the Norm is going to officially end on October 26th. Uh, if we're not going to do another podcast for a couple weeks, then that means you know our next one won't be till a little while afterwards. So I uh, just want to say congratulations in advance to those of you who joined us on this. I've read the Bible pretty much every day since then, and I've been praying every day, pretty much every day. I think I missed a couple of days here or there. Um, but I've gotten a lot better at some of the basics of faith that I've needed to work on. Um, and so I know it's been quite a, a blessing for me. It's been very effective. And I, I hope that, you know, to, what, to whatever degree you guys have joined us on, that, that it's also been beneficial uh, to, uh, for you as well. Yes. All right, you guys, we're going to go ahead and sign off here, but we hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend and enjoy the Sunday message. We love you guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Yes, bye-bye. Bye.